Good evening, Council. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to what possibly could be the last Council meeting of the year. Um, and we will start tonight with Suzanne. Thank you. Mayor Levy. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Carr. Here. Council Member Case. Here. Council Member Harvey. Present. Council Member Labar. Here. Council Member Sonier. Here. Council Member Sawyer. Here. Thank you. Thank you. You will all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we move on to agenda item number 3A, and I'm proud to say I've uh, had an opportunity to spend some time with Brian Potts, and he is here to give a presentation on the gen on the uh, JLU study, the Joint Land Use Study. Brian, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, my name is Brian Potts. I don't have a microphone, but I can project. Oh, she's you got getting it. it. Hello? Hello? Okay, all right. Uh, my name is Brian Potts. I'm with Pikes Peak Area Council of Governments. I'm the program manager for the Joint Land Use Study. I was up here about two years ago when we were starting this study. Uh, this began in fall of 2015, and we have been uh, working on this for, um, uh, it seems like, longer than two to three years. But uh, it's a community-driven process, and there's been Joint Land Use Studies done in oh, there's been 120 of them done throughout the country. This is the first one that was done in Colorado. And the idea behind a joint land use study is that it's a way to look at uh, community, it's a community driven process. And it's a way to look at the military installations and military activities in the area and understand that relationship and potential partnerships and collaboration between communities and the military. Up here in some of our study, we know that uh, Teller County and Woodland Park area has a lot of uh, individuals who work down at the installations, or our veterans who used to work down at the installations and, have, uh, and are now living up here. Uh, this whole region of four counties, which I'll describe in a bit, uh, has a very strong connection to the military. Uh, with that, we wanted to look at, uh, through this study, how can communities and the military work together to both support military mission and at the same time uh, manage any impacts that come from military operations within the area. Uh, particularly the counties of Teller County, El Paso County, Fremont County, and Pueblo County were the area of study. Now, these military operations that occur at the installations in our area, Air Force Academy, Fort Carson, Pearson Air Force Base, Schriever, and Cheyenne Mountain, those operations sometimes extend beyond these boundaries of this region, but for the purposes of this, we had to kind of rein it into where the majority of things occur. This military uh, presence has always provided a bit of economic, uh, a majority of economic activity throughout the region. Um, and again, there's uh, some facts that will be shown in this report. Uh, the draft report is online. Uh, we had sent out a news release, but uh, just so you know, there is one more day on the uh, public comment period at this point, um, and that is going to close at 5 p.m. tomorrow, but we wanted to try and give an overview of where things are going um, with the, the, or where things have gone with this report. Um, as growth occurs, even up here with development, uh, we know that there's been a lot of uh, uh, instances in the, in the recent past where Fort Carson operations uh, have created some uh, issues amongst some of the members of the public in the area in terms of noise or concern about what is going on. Uh, we've heard that Fort Carson and the local communities, including Woodland Park, have tried to work together to uh, find out how do we address some of these issues with helicopter routes. Uh, how do we inform the public and citizens as to what is going on? If an issue happens up here, how do the citizens work through the elected officials to communicate with Fort Carson on these issues? So a lot of this is covered within this study. Uh, at the end of this month, we will conclude this part of the study and be moving on to implementation. And I'll get into that in a little bit. 
Some of the key findings that we've noted for uh, how it relates to both Woodland Park and to some extent Teller County is that of course there's a lot of uh, training that occurs on some of the BLM land around this area. Um, you have citizens within this area uh, that are interested in learning more about what the military is doing when they are uh, in flight. Uh, we've also learned that uh, there's a lot of flight from bases and installations that are not in our area. Buckley regularly comes over this area with jets. Uh, there's other installations outside of the region and even outside the state that will come and utilize the mountains areas uh, to, do, to conduct training. We hope that uh, we can help guide um, citizens through this report to help better understand what happens um, in the airspace above this area. Also, naturally, wildfire management. Uh, that is of a mutual concern, stormwater, watershed protection. These are things that are shared interests of both the military and communities within this region, as we all uh, share many of these resources and they all, affect, uh, they all affect us. When it comes to wildfire management, the military has done some, created some partnerships with local fire departments. Uh, they often operate, um, uh, provide aerial support, uh, ground support uh, when it comes to wildfire. And so that's something else that is noted in this study. So there are approximately 10 strategies that have come out of this report. Mostly they are focused to summarize on collaboration between the military and community stakeholders, um, looking at ways to uh, get information out to the public and developing tools through online mapping of military operations, flight areas, airspace use, try and help inform uh, both you as elected officials and uh, also to make things available for citizens in case they're wondering what is that that's flying overhead. Most of the feedback we got from citizens of both Woodland Park and in Teller County were, hey, we're just curious about what's going on. Frequently they don't have an issue with it, they just want to know what are they doing? What, why is this training important? Uh, and, and in some cases, how can we support it? So with that, um, there's going to be a lot of opportunity going forward uh, after this report is completed. Uh, we are applying with, for funding through the Department of Defense to assist local communities with informational, developing some of these informational resources. And one of those things that we believe will be useful up here is we will work with uh, all of you and your public communication folks and your planning officials to develop some informational brochures for those that don't have internet access but want something where they can kind of figure out, oh, that's a helicopter, that's probably with Fort Carson, and this is what they're doing. Or that's a jet flying over here. We know that's from Buckley. Now we know what that is. Just providing some of those resources to help out. Um, however, going forward, as other issues arise, we also plan to be here to support those as they come and, pr and act as a liaison between communities, uh, staff, and the military when there is an opportunity for community partnership with the military or some issue that needs resolution. Uh, with that, the study, uh, please feel free to comment in the short time that is still left. Uh, but again, contact us if you have any questions. And, uh, and if you have any questions right now, or if you expand on anything, I can do so. Thank you. Anybody? Mm -hmm. One question. Can the uh, Council of Government sponsor elected officials uh, visits to the military bases? We can certainly uh, work on uh, getting something going on. There's a state of the base, uh, um, state of the base events that happen that are intended for out outreach with that. And we get the invites to those and sometimes it's a matter of getting that distributed to all the elected officials and we can work on getting you guys tied in with that. In terms of tours, that can certainly be arranged too in terms of understanding the operations. Uh, fortunately, through the Council of Governments, we do have um, non-voting members that are represented from each installation. And so we have those connections that we can help out with facilitating that, if uh, whether it's all the installations or one in particular if you're interested. And we have good relationships with all of them, Kill, so if you need anything, uh, I can certainly help. Well, I, I can also you offer can up those uh, elected officials' visits as well, but I thought the council might be another, another uh, venue to do that. Absolutely. Can we go back to where you work again? Yes, we can. That's that great. And you better do it soon. I'm going to retire eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for Brian? Really appreciate the work, Brian. Thank you, Josh. <clears throat> and again, we're we're here to here to help you out. We are here as a resource. So please utilize us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for a succinct presentation. Thank appreciate you. it. Okay.
move on any additions, deletions, or corrections. Council, if not, we'll move on to the consent calendar. And Suzanne. Thank you, Mayor Levy. We have two items this evening on the consent calendar. The first is the approval of the minutes of the November 15th 2000 council meeting but I do have a correction to those minutes on page two of your minutes we had um, put in the minutes that Arden Weatherford spoke in opposition of this amendment and this was regarding um, the disposition and development agreement what the correct statement should be is that Arden Weatherford spoke advising the council to trust their lawyer, not the DDA, and that the amendment should be approved, but not to expect development on the property. So I'm going to make that correction and just wanted to mention that. So that's the minutes. And then the second um, item on the agenda is a settlement approval. Okay. Council, any questions? Great. Uh, motion to approve the consent calendar, please. I'll move to approve it. Second. There you go, Suzanne. Thank you. Carr? Yes. Case? Yes. Harvey? Yes. Labar? Yes. Levy? Yes. Sonier? Yes. Sawyer? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Suzanne. Move on to agenda item number six, public comment. And item <coughs> on the agenda, I have Lynn Jones. Good evening, Mayor and members of Council and City staff. I'm Lynn Jones. I live at 260 Morning Sun Drive and own a business at 110 West Midland. And I'm just here this evening to, um, to thank everyone who participated in the Shop Small Saturday on November 24th. And also um, just to provide a brief summary of the event. Our community showed up big that day and so did shoppers from many other communities. It was a great day and the theme um, I think was fun. Businesses had fun, shoppers had fun. And I think what really made it work is the collaboration between the city, Main Street, the Chamber, and businesses. We worked very hard to communicate um, with businesses and to encourage their participation in the event and we also advertised to the community and encouraged them to shop small. So we had the um, the welcome station and approximately 150 shoppers stopped by. We handed out 75 canvas uh, shop small bags um, to our shoppers and in that bag was um, the shopping list of businesses and their specials that were participating that day. And um, the visitor center was open and some 70 people visited um, in the center. and. Um, yeah, it was, it was lots of fun. I, I, I have a description that I want to share um, that was provided by Shannon and Hector, who own Rocky and Roll Music, and I think it's a fabulous description of the day. We noticed that there was an increase in pedestrian traffic, customers parking and shopping multiple, multiple shops after stopping at the welcome tent. We all came together as small businesses, and shoppers definitely noticed. We hope this becomes an annual event so it can continue to grow. And again, I think there, there were just so many groups that were participating. I did want to mention that um, for the welcome station, what turned out to be uh, really great is the chamber also stepped up to be a neighborhood champion. And when a chamber of commerce is a neighborhood champion for an American Express event, they get a tremendous amount of free stuff. And so the chamber gave all of that to the welcome station. So um, it really stepped it up. So we had some great feedback from businesses as well. Tweeds, their sales were up 48% from Shop Small last year. Kitchen Connection, an increase in sales over last year. It was a great day. Vintage Market, it was awesome. 50% increase in sales. The Cow Hand, we had not seen a Shop Small Saturday like this for many years. The customers were waiting in line to make their purchases. Brenda's Boutique, the store had a great day. It was very busy. Colorado Gear Lab, it was one of our top three sales days. So it's true that these, um, that it was, you know, very encouraging, very encouraging results, but as they say, not all boats rose with the tide, and we had businesses within the 
um, downtown area and the outer areas that didn't experience Shop Small Saturday in, in how we hoped they would. So we have a lot of work to do the next time around. And from the sounds of some of the feedback, I think we're going to get some help. So for instance, um, Jim Olson from Foxworth Galbraith shared with us, he said, it was a success for us. He said, I think if we had a coupon in the bag, a punch card, or something that allows us to um, track the traffic, it would be nice. And here was my, my favorite comment from Jim. He said, maybe before the event next year, we can all get together and brainstorm ideas. So businesses really want to help, and it will make a difference. They want to be involved. So it was good, but it needs improvement, and um, we'll continue on that. So for now, I would just like to continue to encourage all of you to show love and shop small here in Woodland Park. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thanks very much. Lynn, great job. My, su my suggestion might be um, to not wait till next year and get started in January and start the conversation. And, and there's no reason that we can't be that year round, right? I, I just don't see any reason why we can't. And, and so let, let's not wait. Let's not wait. And if you need help, you know what? Uh, we always have lots of volunteers and it just makes sense to me. If it doesn't make sense to you, I get it. But that would be my, that would be my thought, and my direction, um, and um, I, I just, just great. What you guys did was great, and, and right, we're always not going to be happy. I don't know if the Swiss Chalet got more business. It's it's not about us individually. It's about the whole community, and and people might have come and, and not been at that store, but they saw it, and they're going to come back. And when we bring people to town like that for events, I think for me, it's the best thing we do. Our events are the best thing that we do in Woodland Park. It's hard to argue with that. Um, and so uh, thanks very much. Great job. Okay. I have nobody else signed up. Would anybody else like to speak at this time on items not on the agenda? Okay. We move on to unfinished business, which there are none and no, or, or, no ordinances on initial posting. And we'll go to public hearings. And we will start with, who are we going to start with, Bianca? <laughs> Aren't you tired of us yet, Bianca? <laughs> Come on up, Bianca, and we'll talk a little dog park. I guess Cindy's going to lead it for us. I'm just going to help get her set up. Thank you. I don't think she needs an introduction. <laughs> That said, we still need your name and address, Bianca. My name is Bianca Bryant, and I live at 570 Primbrook Drive, Woodland Park, Colorado. Sorry. <laughs> so at our last public hearing, we addressed that a dog park is going to be a great asset for our community. The issue, though, was the location. So I am here today to create um, a dog park at Meadowood Sports Complex. My objective. My objective is to partner with the city and establish a sustainable dog park for the community. I also want to establish Golden Meadows Dog Park at Meadowood Sports Complex and get approval for the name Golden Meadows Dog Park. So here is the, a picture of the location I am proposing. Um, this is taken from the view of Evergreen Heights Drive Road and it's right next to the tennis courts. And it is about, here, I'll show you on the next slide. So here's the site plan, and it is 0 0.51 acres, which is plenty enough room for dogs to run around. And we, of course, still have a separated area for small dogs and large dogs. 
<laughs> why Meadowood Sports Complex is not only a great place, but why I think it's going to be even better than the proposed area before is because um, for the parking, there's plenty of parking already, so that's going to be cutting a lot of costs down. And there's already permanent parking, so we won't have to deal with any mitigation. And I was also thinking that we'll be able to even, you know, host events at this dog park. For example, my opening event. So we could get food trucks and, you know, t can have a little tent set up. And it'll just be great for everyone to gather and um, celebrate at the opening of my dog park traffic. There's already getting plenty of traffic over there from other activities in the park and many people are already walking their dogs on the trail over to that park anyways. And the traffic for a dog park compared to the other sports over there is not going to be really significant. Watershed protection. We don't have to deal with any water issues in the area. There's no creek or um, lake or anything nearby so I think that issue will be covered. Therefore, I won't be doing wood chips. And residence impact. There's no properties within 150 feet of this location, which means they're really not going to be impacted, you know, whatsoever by sound or whatever they might have an issue about. And routine maintenance or upkeep. The park is already being maintained three times a week for the Meadowood property and sports complex. Additional benefits of Meadowood property. Like I said, we could host events there. There's plenty of parking and um, dog adoptions and dog training could even happen at my dog park. Wi-Fi hotspot. So thanks to Peak Internet. Um, we'll be having a Wi-Fi hotspot, which will be donated, which is going to, I think, increase people coming because, you know, um, they might have to work or do something, but they also need to exercise their dog so they can, you know, do work on their phones or bring a computer, or things like that, and also watch their dog as they're exercising and socializing. So, yeah. And it's going to draw to the other activities in the area, I think. So, yeah, great. <laughs> Maintenance. So the trash removal will be, will be removed every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday by the Parks Department. It's estimated to be about... $3,200 per year plus $300 for minor um, repairs. And I have a local donor who is committed to $2,500 per year for 10 years. So that is $25,000 total endowment towards the maintenance if needed. And of course we'll have other volunteers that are willing to help the um, Parks Department buy the maintenance and upkeep every once in a while. And um, Mr. Wilde, would you like to address more, go into more detail about that? Yes, uh, like Bianca said, we're already out there uh, three days a week. It's about an hour a day, um, you know, emptying trash cans, uh, looking looking for trash, cleaning up. Um, if there is an, any need for a fence repair, uh, we did some preliminary numbers, about 370 bucks to replace a 50-foot section of fence. Uh, very low maintenance costs on the fence. They have switched, switched to a, uh, a coated um, chain link fence, um, so uh, there shouldn't be much maintenance, if any, on this fence. And then, okay. <laughs> I also have a, you know, personal donor who is um, willing to adjust whether, you know, whatever the price may be for maintenance, of course, that could be stretched, um, but the pricing shouldn't be a problem at all for maintenance, so... <laughs> So the new cost. So for, oh, I don't know why it looks like that. Anyways, for money raising activities, the fencing and gating will be almost $1,300. The signs are going to be about $800. The bear -proof, trash, bear proof trash can will be $1,000. And the doggy bag stations will be about $300. And the tree guards, there's four trees in that whole thing, will be about $120. And the benches will be almost $6,000, which is a total of about $19,000, which I will be doing money-raising activities to cover. My next step. So after I get this approved by you guys, I will be doing money-raising activities to raise the $19,000.
I'll gather all my supplies and possibly having a groundbreaking ceremony. We'll start construction on the dog park, I'm hoping early spring, and I have a grand opening celebration um, during the summertime. And I'm hoping to possibly get this done by about May 9th, um, but that can of course be put back depending on my money raising activities. So yeah. Desired outcome of the public hearing. Like I said, I want to partner with the city to establish a sustainable dog park in our community. I want to approve the name Golden Meadows Dog Park. And I want to approve Golden Meadows Dog Park at the Meadowood Sports Complex. Thank you. Thank you, Bianca. Council, where shall we start? <clears throat> we got a couple questions, but uh, who else? Go ahead, though. Um, I have some comments I prepared, and uh, you've assuaged uh, about half of this, so I'm going to blund blunder through it anyway. I appreciate you looking at the maintenance costs. It's one of the mm -hmm. problems I had with this in the first place. But I've, I've recently been on a tour in a city. Uh, personal responsibility is a, is a problem for me. Uh, this, uh, people not picking up after dogs and things like that, it, it is in addition to driving improperly and things like that. Cause, cause the city to ha have tremendous expenditures that are unplanned and uh, really shouldn't be a problem. Um, so the, the problem I had was the dog poop not being picked up. Uh, personal responsibility that has to do with driving and has to do with dog park, dog poop picking up. I mean, I could divide this up into a, a report later, but... Um, you know, personal responsibility with examples of uh, the impactful closing of Valley Drive and the constant repairs in our public parks caused by vandalism, not normal wear and tear. I'm, I'm tired of unnecessary taxpayer money being spent on those things. As a youth, I used to play baseball in a public field and players picked up the dog poop themselves or we just jumped over it uh, when we were fielding a ball. That worked for free, so maybe we don't even have to have this money. Who knows? Um, we also locked up our high school ball field to keep maintenance costs down where I grew up, so maybe that is an alternative in the future, too. We're already seeing how uh, best intentions uh, mushroom unintended costs. Uh, the pool is a perfect example uh, with a huge negative impact on our, on our maintenance budget. Um, there, there's... Um, a problem I have with the with the site is that the destination site for visitors in this location is, no matter how much signage exists, is not going to bring visitors over there. It's also in a remote elite neighborhood serving only a small number of local residents. That's problematic. Um, the permanent site uh, in this dog one run will also lock in city property forever. Um, and it might be that that might be used. These are small problems, I understand, but I'm just kind of uh, demonstrating the uh, logic problems we have to consider when we're on council for the sake of 8,000 people, not a, a few. Um, I've been told that the former city manager was said to have opposed the dog park because there are thousands of acres of green space and forest that dogs can already use in our neighborhoods. I agree. Uh, there's also an alternative, a non-remote 0.44 acre, in other words, 700 some an acre less, owned lot just south of the infamous Maragas site at Woodland Station. It fits the check marks for a permanent dog park is centrally located and therefore has the potential to partially offset the inevitable maintenance costs with destination commerce sales tax revenue. So I'm looking at this kind of as a dual purpose type of thing. Uh, for all those reasons, I'll, I'll probably vote no on this location. I think it's a good concept, just a bad location, and that's just that's just my one opinion. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Who's next? Is it Bill? No. Kelly. Kelly. Kelly was smiling. <laughs> Kelly was smiling. Well, I, I took the opportunity to meet with Bianca at the site. She's very excited about it. It's uh, going it's it's more pleasing because the lack of residences that are adjacent to the property. Um, and we're hoping that possibly having the dog park might take some pressure off the fields out there 
and we will mitigate some of the maintenance issues that we're seeing now from the animals being on those fields and eliminating on the fields causing cleanup and, and things like that. Because a number of the fields out there are artificial turf, it requires a cleanup um, because it's not just going to go into the earth again as it does in normal soil situations from time to time. I live on the street that accesses the park and I think that the park lends itself to this type of use and, and the land really is not large enough to facilitate much else out there and for those reasons I think because of the, the, the lack of impact on residences that was an issue on the other side, um, it just seems to fit well. Um, it's in a neighborhood where lots of folks already walk their dogs. Um, as I say, I live on that street and we have lots of people that are regular walkers every day. But I think we enjoy that space from a residence perspective. Mm -hmm. Understand that this may not be the only dog park for our lifetime in Woodland Park and that possibly there might be a location as Councilmember Carr mentioned in the center of town that might lend itself to providing another opportunity that might serve our visitors and tourists that come to town if we're successful in this venture. So I think it's it's a good alternative and we provide a great amenity to our citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Well, I, <coughs> Bianca, the amount of, of research and, and homework you put into this project is incredible, but um, I challenged the city manager to give us uh, a more concrete assessment of what the startup costs would be for this particular location and the maintenance. Uh, so, Darren, I don't know if you can answer those questions this evening or not. Is We, we are going to approve uh, a budget for 2019. So first question is, how much would uh, establishing this park uh, with some fencing already in place, maintaining the park over a period of time, and, and frankly, I don't, I am so impressed with the fact that you've got folks that <coughs> have committed to donating money for the maintenance, but mm -hmm. it's, uh, uh, it's inevitable that that may not occur. So what would the cost be to the city, and how will that impact the 2019 uh, budget and then the follow-on question is uh, there are some cascading effects from uh, accepting any dog park whether it's at this location or another location will we have to review the ordinances re uh, referring to leash laws uh, will we have to have some type of um, entry control for the park uh, those are some of the, the follow-on eventualities of any dog park can you address any of those? Well, I had Kip earlier um, discuss. We did go in depth. We actually had um, superintendent uh, uh, look at the labor costs, the maintenance costs, materials. It, it generally, we had a number that was around forty-two hundred dollars. If Bianca is it has secured twenty-five hundred dollars, it's about a seventeen hundred dollar impact to our to our bank to our budget. If if there are not additional donations. Um, I said that number again, I'm sorry. Seventeen hundred dollars, I believe that's um, about right. And that a year a year time. annually, correct. And yeah, that, that that's worst case scenario. Um, and the impact of the two thousand and nineteen budget? That, that that would be worst case scenario, seventeen hundred dollars. Um, really probably closer to fourteen or less. Because we don't believe we're gonna have to replace the fence in the first year. Um, not for so, quite a while. Not for quite a while, yeah. So yeah. So that that's generally there, as Bianca um, stated, uh, the, she believe the endowment will be set, established at twenty five hundred dollars starting in the first year. That uh, would take a large portion of those maintenance costs, um, and, but I would have to imagine that we can we can come up with um, a, a portion of that seventeen to fourteen hundred dollars to not have a pretty minimal impact to our budget. Um, the the other issues you brought up, we can co we can. Um, We'll definitely bring those back to you. I didn't. I didn't have in the research done on the control uh, um, question you had. Um, what was the other question? I'm sorry. Uh, well, leash laws. Yeah, leash laws. 
liability kind of those liability. kind of things. It, it would it, since it falls within our we would have to have insurance on it. Um, it would fall within our par our existing park, so yes, we would have insurance on the park. Which and which people already let their dogs run across the fields now. Yeah, uh, especially in that area, actually the same area. So. Yeah. Not to, I don't think a lot of people uh, take advantage of dog parks that, uh, that uh, there are a lot of people that do take advantage of dog parks, but maybe people don't understand the potential positive impacts. Um, uh, I know that, uh, you know, one of the things that Bianca hasn't brought up is that social impact that a lot of the discussion about all the green space that, that's out there is, um, is a truth, but Dog owners typically like to come to dog parks to not only socialize and exercise their own dogs, but also socialize between other dog owners. And so there's, you'll be surprised, I think you will be surprised at the demand uh, that will be generated um, by this park, I, it, uh, if, if approved. One of the other issues that came to mind, I, I've done my own research about um, the designation of dog parks in public, uh, public areas. Uh, would we control the hours of operation? Would we lock it up? Would we uh, consider um, uh, literally a gateway for the parks where dogs are in, enter into the park in, in, in a uh, controlled fashion and then use the park? I mean, these, these are follow-on issues. It's more than just designating a half acre for dogs to, to run free and be dogs. Uh, there are other issues that will tie into our liability as a city. Um, I just wanted to remind you that, that her plan and her design does include that intermediary space where they are taken off the machine and right into the park that is controlled mm -hmm. at the entrance. It's like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's been part of her presentation. And that would, that would also be a, a cost to the city to establish that, that um, control area to, to let dogs off leash. Well, there's that's actually part of the fencing area. Yeah, okay. That's part of the part of the construction of the, the, the fence. Hey, Carol, it sounded like one of your concerns was the endowment. So, and, I I never money. count chickens before they hatch. I, be, uh, that's less of a concern than the liability for the city. Let me help you with your count. Can you tell us where the endowment's coming from? Um, Well, it is coming from Ms. Fury from um, Park State Bank. And, uh, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. no, it's, uh, that's better than... What a wonderful gesture. Yes, better than I had anticipated. It's a $25,000 gesture, so that's mm -hmm. much appreciated. So anyway, that's just, uh, I feel like that's money in the bank. No pun intended. But, um, <laughs> Absolutely. I'm not, it doesn't concern me. So. But if you look up at the design there, um, Councilmember uh, Harvey, the, that little those squares right there, oh, that's the, okay, that would be, so, those, yeah, let's go ahead. It's not really drawn correctly, but what would happen is there's a main grate to a divided area where you can go, of course, you can go left into the small dog area or right into the large dog area, and in that box area, you can let your dogs off leash but there will be signs posted that you must keep your dog on a leash until you're in the dog park. So, I, yeah. <laughs> the concept, I, I have no problem supporting it, but I, I think that there will be some follow-on actions that the, the city and the council will have to take in terms of uh, controlling the operation of, of a park, whether it's this one or any dog park. And then the other question I had, uh, and Bianca, you had mentioned this before, that you would, and I'm not posing this question to you, it's really to Mr. Wiley, is uh, no longer using uh, the mulch, that it would just be a, maintained as a grassy area? Yes, ma'am. It would be a grassy area. Um, there are gates to access with mowers if needed, or if we need to bring in material. I don't foresee that um, being an issue, but if we have to knock the weeds down, bring in mowers. What is it now? What is the? It's just a, 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 it's a natural grass, natural. mountain mm -hmm. grass, if you will, um, mm -hmm. half dirt, half grass. Mm -hmm. yeah, it'll just be dirt. Mm -hmm. Hillary? Oh, I don't have any questions. Thank you. Oh. 
What a wonderful job. Thank you so very much. I deeply appreciate it. I'm sure the citizens and the people of Woodland Park will appreciate it. And you are doing the park a service because you will be giving relief to the poor maintenance people who have to walk all over the fields and pick this stuff off of the artificial turf. People will use the park, alleviate maintenance over there, condensing it into one area. You've got the Park State Bank working with you. You've got citizens and people out here supporting you. Man, you named it the right thing. You're going to get your gold medal. Thank you very much for all your hard work. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. I guess it's my turn. It is. Uh, Bianca, I truly believe this is a home run. This is the perfect location. So let me tell you a little story about the swimming pool. And there was a huge uproar in the community about the location. So we had a lot of people come up to council and give all their concerns. And the council up here had to take in all those concerns and make the decision of where that pool should be. We had to make the decision. So I took all the concerns and I said, okay, if I put the pool over here, do those concerns follow? Yes, those concerns follow. Okay, if I put the pool here, do all those concerns follow? Yes. Over here, yes. So it didn't matter where we put the pool, everybody had a concern regardless where it was. Mm -hmm. So I just heard my fellow council members have concerns. And it falls into the same problem. If we put that dog park anywhere in this town, they're still gonna have those concerns. I think it's perfect. You've got parking already, you've got a walking trail, mm -hmm. you've got tennis courts there, you've got, yes, it's off the beaten path, but that's kind of what you want. There's no homes around there mm -hmm. for the dog barking. Uh, I used to run that path literally every day for five years. I know exactly the landscape there, and it, it works out really well. Uh, I, think, I think this is the way to go. Um, I also feel that if you're patient enough, which you have been, what has it been, six months? Uh, a year and a half. A year? <laughs> okay, I guess I'm off a little bit. Yeah. But I, al I always feel if you're patient enough, the solution will present itself. And in this case, your solution presented itself. I know you came mm -hmm. here to the council many times and, and walked out of here with your, no pun, tail between your legs. <laughs> but... But you're here now, and this is this is a winner, and it's all the the first step of making anything happen is the hardest. And yes, this might succeed, it might not, but at least it will answer everybody's questions if we should have a dog park. And since you're funding everything, um, seventeen one thousand seven hundred dollars a year, really? That that's a concern. That that's ridiculous. So. I, I truly believe the council should vote for this, and I think we should get this dog park. Thank you, Thank you sir. Congratulations. We are in public hearings. Would anybody else in the audience like to speak? Yeah. Go ahead, Pat. This was the uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Pat has slept by 40 Sunny Glen, Woodland Park. Um, we answered a lot of those questions before about in terms of the benefit to the community. It's about community, and it's not just about tourists. It would have been a great thing if we could have used it to stimulate some retail and sales in our community if it could have been a place that tourists could access easier, but that wasn't working out. This really was about our community in the first place. It's about the people that live here. It's about this elderly population that have dogs for comfort and security, and they can't necessarily walk them on all those trails, but they can take them to a dog park, they can let them run and get the exercise they need, and they're making friends, which we, makes life so much better as we grow older, especially when we start losing some of our friends from our age, is that this gives them a new place to form and a new community. So to me, the benefit so outweighs $1,400 in cost. <laughs> That's my feeling. And like I said, in terms of the, the picking up the poop thing, Keep Woodham Park Beautiful said, we'll try to do some kind of uh, promotions within that space to encourage people to pick up after their pets wherever they walk them. So, that's Thank, you. Thank you. Anybody else? <clears throat>
Okay. That said, um, did I hear a motion? To I'd like to whoa, do whoa, it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What is the action that we're taking? This is not a... We'll go, well, oh. go ahead. The motion, um, as listed on the agenda for the public hearing, is to approve the request for the dog park in this particular area. Mm -hmm. Is this a resolution, an ordinance, or just consensus it's from just the council? It's just consensus. consensus. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the request uh, to develop a .51 acre dog park at Miami Sports Conference as presented. Great. I'll second it. And... Yeah, second. It's not a motion, so it's just a consensus. It's so just a who, shake your head, yes or no. It's a shake your head. It sounds like we have six, or four, six four. You're, you're four also. We have seven in favor and none opposed. Bianca, great job. Yay. Well, in a little bigger picture, and it's okay to be emotional because this is an emotional issue. Um, I'm going to help you in this regard. You call me, and I'll help you raise that money. I will, too. Can you shake your hands, hands? Yes, of course you can. You should be shaking your hands. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good job. Good job. I'd give you a hug, but you call it Good job. I want to see your gold medal. <laughs> so you can't leave that fast, Bianca. These, but this is a no-brainer. Another one downtown or something. For people that do special things that go above, right, and beyond for our community, That's clearly That's you've done that. That's Everybody in this room is in support of what you're doing. Once they that is an anomaly in itself. So God bless you. You get the mayor's pen. <laughs> And uh, we're in good health. All right? Great job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we we'll move on to Ordinance 1336. Good evening, Mayor Council. Um, this first ordinance, or Ordinance 1336, is to establish two brand new funds, special revenue funds. Um, one is the lodging tax fund, and the other one is the conservation trust fund. This is the second reading and public hearing for the adoption of that ordinance. Uh, as, as stated previously, this, these two funds will account for and provide uh, increased uh, accountability and transparency for the lodging tax that the city receives and also the conservation trust monies. So with that, I ask for your approval. Council, questions? If not, we'll just ask for a motion to approve Ordinance 1336. <coughs> motion. Okay. It's administrative. <laughs> motion oh, to approve. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Public hearing. Just, I was, but everybody just left. <laughs> <laughs> Can you throw a dog into the mix? <laughs> I'm sorry, anybody in the audience like to speak? Okay, my bad. Um, motion to approve, to approve ordinance 1316. And a second. 1336. Kelly. Thank you, Suzanne. East? Yes. Harvey? Yes. Labar? Yes. Levy? Yes. Soignier? Yes. Sawyer? Yes. Carr? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Go ahead, man. All right, Mayor and Council. Uh, this next one is Ordinance Number 1337. It is uh, to adjust the budget for 2018. We have adopted the budget back in uh, December of 2017. Uh, there is there's been a few funds that do need to uh, be increased. Uh, there, the city manager is required to certify that the. Uh, um, there are revenues to cover these increased expenditures or appropriation, and therefore we ask for your approval to, to do that. Uh, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I, I just wanted to clarify, I, I already know the answer to this, but I want to clarify that this is uh, still the same numbers we used in initial posting. There have been no changes since the Thank first you. reading. Thank you. Anybody else? 
anyone in the community like to speak on this issue? Okay, if not, uh, motion to approve number 1337, please. I move to approve 1337 as presented. Second. Second, Suzanne? Harvey? Yes. Labar? Yes. Levy? Yes. Sonier? Yes. Sawyer? Yes. Carr? Yes. Case? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Third time's a charm. Yes. Here we go. Let's go. Cool. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor and Council. Again, uh, ordinance number 1339. This is to uh, adopt the budget for 2019 and appropriate those uh, expenditures to the various funds. Uh, we've had numerous uh, work sessions, uh, a couple of count regular council meetings to discuss this budget. It's been presented in detail. There are no changes since the first reading. Uh, this is a public hearing, and we ask for your adoption. Council. Community. I'm going to lead this one. <laughs> Arm wrestle. I'm going to lead it because I'm really proud of what we've accomplished. Uh, we worked hard. Uh, we worked together. We set, we set priorities. We set our goals. And we accomplished about nine or ten. Is that correct on the list? Nine. Nine, nine out of our top ten we accomplished. Um, by working together and seeing big picture and, and so I think it's a it's really an indication of how we're going to move forward in the coming year so I will let whoever wants to make the motion to approve our budget for two public hearing Let's do a public hearing public hearing okay second I'm sorry that was case and sorry thank you Labar yes Levy? Yes. Sonier? Yes. Sawyer? Yes. Carr? Yes. Case? Yes. Harvey? Yes. Yes. Nice job. Well, good cheering. With, <laughs> with the addition of seventeen hundred dollars <laughs> for the maintenance of them. <laughs> and we would like to say thank you, Council. <laughs> okay. We move on to new business and Kip, I guess the next three belong to you. You want to take them all together? How do you want to handle this? Yes, sir, I'd love to. i just ask for a separate motion on each one. Got it. Okay, okay so uh, agenda items 10A, B, and C are resolutions 837, 838, and 839. These are all granting a, a public utility easement for water and uh, wastewater infrastructure. This infrastructure was put in in the Valley View Apartments. Uh, the first uh, slide here you see is the approximate location uh, of the Valley View Apartments, Highway 67, Highway 24 is at the bottom. And then uh, zooming in from there is the actual plat of the subdivision. Uh, the plat, it was broke, this is the replat of the subdivision. It was broken down into three uh, tracks or lots. You have lot one, which is where the 24 units uh, were constructed. Lot two is an open lot and tract A is at the southern portion of the subdivision. Uh, both property owners are here, Mr. Meyer and Mr. Weaver, to answer any questions you have on the property or the easement. They have all signed the grant of easement uh, to uh, allow the city to maintain our water and wastewater infrastructure. Um, resolution 730, or 837 excuse me, is for Lot 1, which is the uh, westerly lot. Uh, lot 2 is Resolution 838 is the easterly lot in the southern lot tract a uh, is resolution 839 i can answer any questions you guys have in regards to the grant of easement or the uh, property owners may i just ask an informational question absolutely i'm just curious why and i'm all for it but why vote three separate times because of the three separate lots because there's three different property owners Oh, okay. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Good question. I ask the same. Good answer. Anything else, Council? Anyone? Mr. Meyer? Mark? You good? <laughs> good if we're good. Okay. We'll start with Resolution 837. Move to approve Resolution 837. Yes, Second. Thank you, Suzanne. Levy? Yes. Soignier? Yes. Sawyer? Yes. Carr? Yes. 
Hayes? Yes. Harvey? Yes. LaVar? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Suzanne. Motion, <coughs> motion to approve resolution 838. Second. <coughs> Thank you. Sonier? Yes. Sawyer? Yes. Carr? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Harvey? Yes. LaVar? Yes. Levy? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Motion to approve resolution 839. Second. I'm coming. Yes. Sawyer? Yes. Carr? Yes. Case? Yes. Harvey? Yes. LaVar? Yes. Levy? Yes. Sonier? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Thanks, Kim. Thank you. Thank you. And Thanks. I would love to put them all on one, but I can't. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Good luck with the new project. Okay. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. We move on to reports. I'm going to defer for a minute or two and go to the council reports. Well, I, br I brought this up um, before, but uh, I took a tour with um, our public works folks and our new city engineer and uh, it got a full uh, appraisal of the impact of uh, personal irresponsibility. And it's, it's discouraging to me that we, we as a city have to react to problems that um, normally the way all of us, most of us were raised we shouldn't be having to deal with, and it's and it's very unfortunate. Uh, it eats up our budget, it eats up time with um, our our wonderful city staff, and having to respond to these things. Uh, and and I'm hoping that with the dog park, with uh, Valley View, which is the specific uh, place I'm talking about, and and other places, uh, Memorial Park's getting beat up by vandalism, with horrendous destruction, and things like that. I'm hoping we don't have that problem at the pool because it's pretty well monitored all the time and it's locked up. But I, I, I'm discouraged that our citizenry is, that there's a few people that affect the, the large number of people in the city and, and it's disappointing to me. Uh, maybe I'm old school and I, I'm, I'm not aware of this uh, change in, in the citizenry, but uh, I know a majority of the citizens are, are like uh, all of us up here, that we're very responsible and we're, we're kind of horrified by all these things. But, I, but I, I, it, it, it's disappointing to me that the city staff has to respond to all these things. Uh, you know, a, a, a small amount of wear and tear, a little bit of breakage is fine, but there's some real major destruction going on. And people speeding places they shouldn't, and we have to react to it and account for people doing things well outside the scope of things. But So that's my speech about that. But I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. I know we had a tough budget battle this not budget uh, discussions this year and I'm looking forward to this next year we're going to have a dynamic budget we'll, we'll see how it goes uh, we've got a great new city manager working on a lot of problems as we speak uh, and, and I'm hopeful that we have a really productive uh, council and city staff uh, for the sake of our citizens and I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah and Happy New Year, thank you I just would like to acknowledge and thank everyone for their support of the Holiday Home Tour this year. We have had our best year yet. We've exceeded our uh, results in prior years in again. And I just want to say thank you to everyone and know that we're going to give away a bunch of money to three nonprofits focused on the forest. Teller Habitat for Humanity and the Woodland Park City Organization this year as a result of the very successful event. It was a lot of fun and I just want to thank you for your support, either from a sponsorship or an attendance perspective, volunteers. It was huge. Thank you, Kelly. Carol? Um, I only ask if the council had any input to the Colorado Municipal League uh, Policy Committee meeting action items for tomorrow. I will be attending that meeting. It's my intent to support all of the action items that CML has uh, uh, agreed to support and oppose those that they agreed to oppose, unless anyone has any input for that. If none, I'll let you know what happens in the next meeting. Thank you very much. Good. I don't have anything this evening, so I hope everyone has a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Thank you. Paul? 
Yeah, I'd like to thank all the volunteers. It's been a v very busy two weeks. Um, with Shop Small, I found it to be a, a wonderful event and uh, enjoyed going to the businesses and participating. The lighter side of Christmas was a very successful year this year. I believe we had a count of around 5,000 people and uh, worked that uh, as Main Street moves forward to consider taking on the obligations of the uh, uh, lighter side of Christmas. I think it would be a very great uh, thing for them to do. Community workshop, community placemaking or placemaking workshop. Again, a lot of volunteers, a lot of participation, a lot of uh, positive feedback. Uh, I hope that uh, everyone who was there and, and the city itself and the citizens of the city and Teller County uh, benefit by these type of uh, workshops and uh, just uh, I think it's uh, a good thing for the city, the Chamber of Commerce, all the volunteers, Main Street, Dola, great uh, participation. I just want to say this, when we all work together and we each put our little light and let it shine, we are like a blowtorch. We can do a lot of great things, and these are perfect examples. The roof is completed on the depot. I want to thank Carl Anderson. He really chipped in there and uh, did a very nice job. The uh, grant money from Dola has been applied for. Main Street has had a very productive year, but it could not have happened without all the volunteers, the city, Chamber of Commerce, and all just the people. I want to thank everybody. I'm not late for Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. And have a happy new year. And keep it safe. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> cool. Thank you, Council. Thank you, City staff. We really hit a good stride this year. I think next year is going to be amazing. We're going to do things that I don't think any council has done in the past because we're starting to work together and we really, really, uh, we understand each other and so we can work together very easily. Uh, thank you for the dog park. Uh, I always felt when uh, the pool went in, I said, what's next? As our community is growing, we want to add to our community to make it even better for the community, uh, more entertainment, more things to do. I know we have national forests, but we do get lost in national forests. So we can't all just go wander in the national forest. <laughs> all right, so, um, so what's the next big thing for Woodland Park? I know the dog park is little, but we have the pool. What's the next big thing? And I think 2019, we're going to come up with that. I think we really are. And Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Hanukkah. I think that's going on. So, and see you all next year. Thanks, Noel. Absolutely. We just wanted to report as I tell you to identify nonprofits, but I just wanted to report a little on the DEA. We had a very positive meeting on Tuesday. And the be bringing things forward. Um, we committed to a joint meeting with the mayor's helping us spearhead that between the city council and the DBA board of directors to build a plan So I look forward to that. We need to be more than And Kelly, along that line, we had asked the staff if they could produce the a copy of the resolution that established the DDA. Were you going to send that to us? We can get that to you. It's I'm pretty sorry. I didn't know if you yeah. were answering or yeah, I was answering. I can't. Oh, yeah. But we can do that. Quickly. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we'll move on to uh, city manager, Dan. Well, I'll, I'll pass this on in a second to Suzanne to make some comments for the coming year. Um, if we need to make, uh, 
on motion for I the meeting. I think he's going to, are you going to save the canceling? Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So. He's saving the best for the last. last. Gotcha. <laughs> well, I just want to say that, you know, uh, I feel blessed uh, to, to be the city manager here. Um, you know, my family is, this is one of the best moves I feel like I've made and my family's made um, in my career. So I just want to thank the city council for bringing me here. Um, I, I was very impressed. My family was very impressed with the parade. It was an outstanding event. I just, I, um, it, I don't think I've seen something like that before. So I just, I think that's an incredible um, asset. And I hope Main Street takes it and takes it in stride, and we see even something better next year. I was, uh, we were all involved with a lot of us were involved with the placemaking event um, over the last couple of days. A lot of great visioning for the future for our community. We're going to do uh, strategic planning next year. So I think we're going in the right direction, uh, and I'm really excited for what we're going to do next year. Um, with that being said, I'm going to hand it off to Suzanne. She's got a few things, house cleaning things to take care of. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Council. If um, things go the way as planned, I think the next time we'll be together, hopefully, maybe is in ja on January 3rd. And on January 3rd, we will be doing all of the appointments to the boards and commissions and committees and all of that. So I want to say this out loud so the public hears it, those that are watching at home. We have openings for the Planning Commission, the Board of Review, the Historical Preservation Committee, the Board of Adjustment, and Keep Woodland Park Beautiful. So we are looking for volunteers for those committees, and we will do the appointments on January 3rd and I would like to say also thank you council it's been it's been a tough year but I think we've all learned a lot learned a lot we've all grown and I look forward to working with all of you next year thank you anything else staff okay got a number of announcements to read to start and uh, Events for the next uh, couple weeks. Woodland Park Community Singers Christmas Concert Series is at Faith Lutheran Church. Um, that's the 7th. Is that this coming Saturday? Friday. Saturday. At 7 o'clock. Friday is the 7th at 7. Saturday at 3. And Sunday at 3. So 7 on Friday, 3 on Saturday, and 3 on Sunday at Faith Lutheran Church. Free community Christmas wrapping at daybreak, Monday through Friday, from 9 to 5. If anybody needs presents wrapped, they've got, uh, they've got just the right resources for that. Uh, Tuesday, December 11th, Chamber Business After Hours at the Edgewood Inn. That's always uh, one of the biggest of the year, and, and uh, look forward to seeing everybody there this coming Tuesday. Now, this is a first, which is, which is pretty cool for all of us. Um, on the 12th, at 5 o'clock, at the pool at the Woodland Aquatic Center, we're going to have our first ever Woodland Park High School girls swim meet. Um, so uh, that's pretty cool. And that's because of certainly our, our whole community and bringing the pool and, and all those things. And, and so that's an exciting event. Friday, December 14th, uh, the State of the Region Membership Breakfast at the Ute Pass Cultural Center. That's from 7.30 to 9. And Mark Dettenreeder and myself will speak um, and we'll have breakfast. Um, Friday, December 14th, also from 2 to 5, the annual Senior Sea and Splash, also at the Woodland Aquatic Center. Uh, I went by and saw that last year. That's just fun to watch. It's really cool. I'm going to be in that event soon. Uh, Saturday, December 15th, from 1 to 3, swim with Santa at the Woodland Aquatic Center. Uh, watch the city website and Facebook with upcoming Woodland Aquatic Center specials. So already the, the folks at the Woodland Aquatic Center are, are working hard to increase revenues for next year. So let's all help in that regard. Sunday, December 16th, from 6 to 8, the Christmas concert with the Swing Factory Big Band at the U Pass Cultural Center. And finally, Friday, December 21st from 3 to 5, a winter day in the park um, at Memorial Park. Um, that's all of those announcements. Now, relative to the 1220 meeting, do we need to vote? 
A consensus just to cancel would be. We don't have anything on the agenda. We've got the budget approved. Is everyone good with canceling the 12-20 meeting? The next meeting then will be December. January. Excuse me, January 3rd. Um, you know, some things were mentioned. I just want to mention quickly because I know everybody appreciates a short council meeting. Um, the parade was phenomenal. What's been said um, pretty much wraps it up. I heard from people. Uh, most of the people I heard from weren't from our community. They came up for it, and I think that's really, really special. And then the event at the cultural center is always is always amazing. Um, you know, it, Suzanne said it. We'll all agree. It's been difficult. Um, starting with an election and, and changing the city manager and, and a budget and, and everything in between and, and a trial and, and just lots of things that we don't normally face in a year. Um, and we're all here standing. Um, we've all stood up for ourselves, what our beliefs were. And uh, we've managed a way, as, as others have said, to, to really kind of come together. Um, and figure out a way to, you know, try to help us. I always say the same thing. We're here for two seconds in the big picture. Um, let's all work together, right? And in this two seconds we're here, we can make Woodland Park just a little bit better, right? Um, it's a special, special place. We all know that, and uh, you can never say it too much. But I want to thank Council. It's been... It's been uh, it's been an amazing year in, in a number of different ways. We got we got four new council members or three new council members, yeah, two new council members. We have Noel coming again though. We got three. We got three that will be here for four years or three more years. Um, Paul and everybody always alludes to it, and I guess it kind of starts with us. But the volunteers in our community, uh, we couldn't do it without, and and we got to find a better way to uh, you know to work together and I always believe the person that sits in this seat and, and it's me you know what I, I've got to do a better job there's no question about it um, and so I'm going to try to provide better leadership and and then I hope it funnels down to everybody else because I know there's there's nobody in this room that believes that we've done everything we can in our own personal life or in the lives of the city and so um, I'm not a big New Year's resolution guy but Next year, I, I will promise that I'll be better and, and hope that we all work uh, for the betterment of Woodland Park. I want to thank our staff, our, our you know, department heads. Again, it's been difficult. And for, seven, for nine months, nine months, ten months, close. Well, so anyway, we were without a city manager. For five months, we were without a city manager. Um, and you guys ran the city. Um, that's the reality of it, and worked together and, and did everything we try to do, but, but you guys did it. And uh, so, you know, big thanks to you, Suzanne. Uh, your leadership when, when, right, when nobody was there. It means a lot. It means a lot. It means a lot, not just to me and, and everybody up here, but to the whole community. And so, again, you know, thanks to everybody. Great community. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. We're going to bounce back next year, and I really believe 2019 is going to be special. So thank you all. This meeting is adjourned.